everybody, this is Ginger here at Ginger's Ranch Show, and I'm going to wait a couple of minutes here for my friends to come on, and new people. Um, I hope all is well, especially those that are down in Southern California in the Santa Bernardino Mountains. Well, the snow, and I hope they're able to dig out and get supplies up there and everything. Those that are part-time... <coughs> And those that are non-residents trying to get up there, they need to be patient. I don't know why this is doing this. Hold on a second, I need to check something. to move. Loki. <laughs> uh, oh, this is a funny cat. Um, anyway, I hope all is well. Um, I know this is Monday, March 6th, and, uh, It's been a, kind of a good weekend. It really is. Loki, you're going to have to move so I can read my... Here. Read my production notes here. I better yeah, put it over here. It's much easier. Okay. Uh, anyway... Um, as you can see, my title is Mondays and More Ongoing Sagas. Well, first of all, over this weekend, uh, CPAC, CPAC, this Conservative Political Action Committee, uh, so-called, I call them so-called, um, they had their meeting this over the weekend, and they had a number of speakers, and many of the speakers are people that are trying to be relevant, like Bobert and MTG and Trump. Uh, you would think CPAC would keep Trump out since he is now under federal investigation. I don't care he who shall not be named is was president. I never liked him and I never considered him as the president. He didn't even act like one. Um, can't stand the guy. Um, anyway, uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, Uh, with Fox News being very hot water and everything else and all these lies, things are, people, it, people are now pushing back. They're, had enough. They really had enough of this. Um, so, uh, and when they, when the Dominion trial, lawsuit trial, Fox Dominion lawsuit trial is going on right now, I'm sure that Dominion will win big, big time because there were a lot of lies and everything else that Fox News was doing and put harm to voting. And Dominion believes in fair voting. And voting is all about the numbers. And those that are ignorant about it or that they're arguing the point, I go, yes, it's about the numbers. If the numbers are not in your favor, well, it's just too bad to go to try again later. But you don't sit there and argue the outcome or the results when the numbers show true facts. You can't change the math. Math is always true. It's never, it's never, it never lies to you unless you do the formula wrong. So, um, but I'm a feeling that Fox is going to lose this case and they're going to lose millions upon millions of dollars and they might be forced to shut down. 
far away to just foxes get out of the news business and just concentrate on the sports just if they're going to be an entertainment company then they should concentrate on movies and sports that's the only two things not news news is not entertainment news is for informing people but it's not entertainment so anyway uh, of course this this started uh, last Sunday, the annual 2023 Itinerog Dog Sledding Race has started in Anchorage to Nome Race. This, it just started on Sunday. Uh, there are 33 mushers. They said this is the small, small field in history. It's really small. I don't know what their average field numbers are and everything. And, of course, you know, as always, PETA is uh, causing problems and uh, scaring off sponsors and everything else. Well, excuse me, the race has been going on for well over 98 years. Well, they said they're starting the 51st year. Uh, but this race was inspired in 1925 when a diphtheria outbreak occurred in Nome. And so they were trying to get the antitoxin vaccine to Nome. And the only way to do it is by dog sled. Because the snow and everything in Akas. And that's how they got the vaccine there to the people in Nome in 1925. From there, they decided to start a dog sled race every year. And, um, much of the entry money and everything else is being used to, uh, for supplies, uh, for booties for the dogs, uh, to protect their paw pads and give them more traction, uh, and shelters and food and lodging and everything for the mushers and, uh, also, it raises a lot of foundation money, too, which goes toward helping animal, uh, animal shelters. Well, you have this peanut group that sits there and causes all kinds of problems and issues, and those guys need to be shut down. I mean, I dealt with them when I was in my horse showing years. And... Uh, they ultimately got kicked out off the showgrounds because of their actions. Because they were endangering people that were trying to ride and compete. And you have a 1,000 pound horse. And if you scare the horse or upset the horse and the rider gets hurt, it's going to be on PETA, not on the rider. Hey, Dorothy! How are things in Florida? I hope good. Uh, here it's, uh, let's see, 47 degrees, mostly cloudy, did get a little bit of rain, tiny bit of rain. Um, oh, it's hot. getting warm down there, huh? Oh, don't forget, Dorothy, this coming Sunday we go to specific day, uh, we go to daylight savings time. So, be sure to put your clock forward on Sunday. Um, my, yesterday at church, uh, my pastor was emphasizing that. He said, that way you're not, you're not late for church. You get there at nine o'clock when intentionality was ten. Um, so you don't want to be late. For anything, mainly. Um... I was talking about the itinerary dog, dog sled race. I remember seeing that race up there in person in 1958. Uh, 1958. I was three years old then. And uh, I was fascinated by all the huskies and Alaskan Malamutes that were there. And I sat down in, in a team. I was sat down on the ground in a team of Huskies surrounded me. They were keeping me warm. Uh, the musher had a daughter that was my age. And, of course, she was there. Because she wanted to see her dad take off. And 
Um, I was petting the dogs, and they were very friendly, very loving, and I got smooched by them a couple of times. And, um, so, you know, Mom was scared. She thought I was going to get mauled, and the, the little monster said, no, I got eight kids, and these dogs love them. They're very friendly, very well socialized, very protective, and they're just playing with my daughter, with, with your daughter, so she's happy there. Well, I got to the point where I got a little too cold on the ground, so um, I got up, and the dogs got up with me, and, you know, stood up with me, and I gave them puppy hugs, and all 12 of them, and went with my mom to go to the sidelines to watch the race take off, and I was hoping that his team would win. So it's a good memory. Uh, we were stationed up in Alaska for three years, three and a half, four years. Um, when my dad was in the Air Force, so. Um, it was fun. It was a good memory. Well, they kept saying it's the 51st year and started in 1973. In reality, the race started in 1925, while the following year started, started in 1926, officially as the itinerary uh, dog sled race. Um, but technically, it's been going on for 98 years. So, uh, So anyway, I wish the mushers good luck. Please be careful. Uh, watch out for moose. Watch out for elk, you know, bear, grizzly bear, Alaskan grizzlies, brown bear, black bear there. Just be very careful. And, of course, they have spotters along the way, too, to keep an eye on them. So that's good. But PETA need to be booted out of Alaska. They need to be booted out of uh, events that involved animals, involved like rodeos, fairs, that type of thing. They need to be booted out and not be allowed to come in. <coughs> now, on my next little thing here, I've been looking, we're going to go through and check my, you know, MSN and all the news that's going on. There's a number of articles there, especially by article, I don't know if you've ever seen it, Dorothy. Uh, it's called, uh, the news, news feed called 1945. Um, they put out kind of misleading titles. And the one I saw that says, oh, President Biden is breaking the law again. I go, excuse me? No, he's not. And I kind of wonder if 1945 is not talking about themselves. Um, I would have to read some of their articles, but it's really dumb, really stupid. Now, I've been watching Minus Touch, and they've been keeping a trust. They to keep everything truthful and everything else that's really going on. And uh, also, um, there's supposed to be an indictment any day now regarding Trump. When's that going to happen? Whether it's New York going to do it first, New York, Georgia, or uh, DOJ is going to do it first. Because all, there's all three of those are pending, so it depends on who's going to go first. Uh, and some say, well, if all three indictments, is that t double jeopardy? I go, no. Same thing applies on murder. If a person did a murder spree across three states, guess what? Under federal. Yeah. It's the, it's called the Midas Touch. It's M-E-I-G-A-S. Uh, it's a, um, news source, news source, Ben Midas and his two brothers run that podcast. And they have professional lawyers and retired, uh, that 
federal prosecutors on this podcast explain everything how it's going on. <coughs> but I like to see Trump get indicted all at once. Three times, all at once. Ah, okay. Sorry, Dorothy. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, the, you when you see my issue, you're thinking M I D A S, and there is a spell a little differently, but it's on YouTube. So if you get a chance, check it out. Um. I gotta check my YouTube channel too and see if I gotten any more subscribers. I'm up to 14. I was 16. I lost two people, so I don't know if they just changed their minds or there was a glitch or whatever that's going on. Oh, speaking of glitches, I just happened to see a news article. Twitter is having issues today. They're having trouble loading any of their photos. Uh, some articles, um, those that use Twitter for business, uh, you know, for, on, you know, for online store business, they're having a lot of problems with that. Um, uh, and of course, I think Elon Musk needs to knock it off, let it go, and give Twitter, give Twitter back to the uh, executives that he fired. They're the guys that know how things work. And should give it back to that and make it employee owned and just leave it alone. Um, and especially also one other company that he owns, he needs to let go. He needs, uh, he needs, to, he needs to give Tesla back to the employees and let them own it and run it. So anyway, um, you know, if some companies, some managers and CEOs, they don't really, let's say, fully know what all their employees do in their jobs. And so they need to get out of their ivory towers, get down on the floor, and just shadow walk with them on the jobs. How things really work, what problems there are, that type of thing. Um, I remember working at Boeing, I was doing my input, data input, uh, rejection tags for the aircraft, and I was running into a problem. The system kept, the system kept crashing. And I was getting really kind of increasingly frustrated because I had a 98 page, get this, 98 page rejection tag to input. So uh, the, the information for the guys on the floor, you know, the mechanics that put the airplanes together on the floor. And to my, I was on swing shift and to my surprise, in walked in the CEO of Boeing. He walks in and he sees me. I always see they're getting increasingly frustrated with the system. There were like two of us. I don't know what happened to the other person, but there were two of us working. The other person apparently walked off or did something. And um, he goes, you look frustrated. And I go, yes. We need to get the system fixed if you want it to work right. And you want the information on the floor for those guys. And he goes, can you show me what the problem is? I showed him what the problem is, what it's doing, explained to him how the job works and everything. He goes, oh, well, why, not? why wasn't I told about this? And I said, <laughs> because then your middle managers are afraid to tell you. And... So, you know, I told him it does not hurt to maybe once a month shadow, do a job shadow with an employee. And that way they show you what the problems and frustrations are. Why are they not being listened to? Because we're the guys on the front lines that are building these airplanes. And he agreed with that. So, 
next day, next day, um, well, he got on the phone and called my boss at home and told him, he said, you know what, you need to fix this issue. What I suggest is that you give your horse operators all week off with pay until they get these, uh, system issue fixed. So we got our week off just to take a break from it. And uh, Rampag was about the same time that the 737 uh, assembly crew was getting their annual vacation. They all take, you know, two weeks off and, you know, vacation and everything. That w And then that way the maintenance crew could come in and fix the things and things like that. But anyway, that worked out the system was fixed there was a lot of updates on it it was much easier much better we got better equipment we got new gas and it worked out great worked out fine so anyway that's one of the things about really gets me about <clears throat> companies and managers and you know, they kind of ask themselves why employees are rebelling he said, well, we have to follow these rules, but why aren't you guys, the management, following the rules? Kind of glaring, you know. Okay, as far as the news feed goes, you, um, and I'm naming them since they're in lie and do false uh, titles. They're kind of misleading. Fox News, 1945. Um, who's one other? Uh, the, now the other companies that do truthful, truthful information, straight facts and everything else is the Washington Post, uh, Newsweek, uh, Newsweek is kind of a toss-up. Newsweek used to be pretty good. Um, I don't know who owns news, Newsweek now. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, trying to think of one other. And then, of course, you have the yellow tabloids who do all this kind of crap too but they basically go after more at celebrities they don't go after political figures or anything that much because a lot of times they got bitten back by lawsuits because of that so anyway news feeds that do misleading titles and everything else need to stop doing that they need to be truthful and they need to stop. Now, especially in the uh, television media, you know, your major channels like ABC, NBC, CBS, uh, they need to put out the facts and let people figure it out for themselves and need to go back to the Fairness Doctrine. Uh, that need to be reinstated. They are, should be required to tell the truth all the time. They can't lie. Like over in Canada and Brit, Brit, their media is not allowed to lie. They put out the truth and the facts and let people make, it up, make up their own minds. So, that's what should be done here. Now, uh, the other thing real quick here. Um, Putin is still trying to be somewhat relevant, but he's losing war. Uh, and he's trying to, and then he's making noises at Belarus, making noise at Moldova, the Baltic states, threat to them. And you know what? Since Russia's not really at the almighty Navy and Army anymore, which they brought it on themselves. 
Yeah, I watch ABC, NBC. Also, I watch CBS, too. CBS is pretty good. Um, oh, Dorothy, you remember Walter Cronkite? Uh, I really miss him. <laughs> I really do. Um, he used to, his people call him Uncle Walter. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, um, Hmm. Well, Wisconsin Supreme Court is now a race for that position is uh, getting a little messy. So anyway, uh, I will be here on Wednesday. Let's see. Let me check my schedule. He knows my cat, which, by the way, he's feeling better. Um. Uh, <coughs> I'm all clear for Wednesday, so I'll see you on Wednesday. Uh, tomorrow I gotta take Sarah away into the vet for a checkup. He seems to be feeling better today. I took him off the prescription diet, science diet medication, or the food cat food because it was starting to make him sick and he wasn't eating it and everything it was making him feeling really kind of bad and so I'm still doing his ear medication and so I took him off that food and put him back on his old food which is uh, meow, meow mix and he's been eating it down gobbling it up he was feeling kind of good this morning he jumped up on the the uh, ledge here and he looked up to see birds and he was chittering at the birds and he hasn't done that for a long long time so he he's feeling better so anyway um uh, be sure to share is this persist and push back no you're not going to mess things up i'm not talking to you dorothy i'm talking to loki He's having the zoomies. <laughs> um, cats are so funny. So anyway, uh, I'll see you on Wednesday. And um, hope all is well. Stay safe. Um, spring is coming. And don't forget to spring forward on your clock. So, anyway, I will talk to you later. Love you guys. I will post this on my YouTube channel. Okay? Let everybody else know, too. If they don't want to use Facebook, they use YouTube. And I will post my video on YouTube. I don't I haven't quite got up to 1,000 subscribers yet. And my goal with that is when I get up to that, I'll start taking donations. This kind of help pay for the Internet. Um... You know, donations and then I will my other goal is to have merchandise for my show so it helps pay for stuff you know pay the bills and everything doing something different so I will talk to you guys later and I'll see you later Dorothy take care in Florida and um, I'll see you on Wednesday Okay, talk to you later. Bye-bye. And thank you. YouTube.